broadcast for shooters, hunters, and gun enthusiasts. This is the Firearms Radio Network. Hey guys, Ryan Cross from the Firearms Radio Network here today at my favorite location, the North Central Washington Gun Club. And today I'm going to be reviewing the multiple impact bullets. These are made by Advanced Ballistic Concepts. What they are is a bullet that's composed of uh, several uh, fragments or projectiles. It comes in a 12 gauge variant, two and three quarter. This is the semi-lethal. This will kill you less dead. It is a 45 caliber bullet surrounded by some pretty hefty segments that are tethered together by some pretty robust string. So when this leaves the barrel of a shotgun, it separates into a Y shape and spins. So it gives you a greater spread and a higher chance of hit probability. They also have a fully lethal for 12 gauge and this is what that looks like. So 45 caliber bullet in the middle and the this is high brass. The less lethal is a little bit low brass. I'll be shooting that today out of my Mossberg 930. You need a rifled barrel to get the full spread effect. Um, and this is the 45 ACP version. It's got a little single piece of buckshot in the middle, surrounded by three segments. Uh, so kind of the, the miniature version of that. And today helping me, I've got two Firearms Radio Network interns. We have here Bobby Bluebeard and Mr. Pink. So they'll be demonstrating today the higher hit ratio um, when you're taking headshots at longer ranges. So let's get started. Hey guys, this is the 45 ACP multiple impact bullet test right there in the magazine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load one standard full metal jacket 230 grain PMC round above it and so that shows you guys kind of the uh, recoil difference between a standard round and the multiple impact round. Let's go take a look. All right, guys, we're downrange looking at the target. My first impact was right here, and uh, the 45 ACP multiple impact bullet didn't spread as much as I liked. I was about 10 yards away, uh, maybe closer to 15 feet. So I backed up a little bit for the second shot, and uh, it's got a much better spread, more than what I was expecting. So here's uh, about the point of impact with the core. And you can see that the segments spread out pretty consistently. Unfortunately today I only brought a 6 inch ruler. Make all the jokes you want. Uh, so you can see uh, it's about 7 inches from this top segment here. A little bit less, more like 6 with that second. And this other third segment is kind of more like 4.5. So, you know, as it's leaving the barrel, it needs a little bit more range to reach its full uh, spread, this radial, radial spread. But then it also kind of fluctuates with the centrifugal force. Those segments kind of get a little bit closer, a little bit farther away. So it's kind of making this uh, spiraling cone of death with these three segments. And this is my, my first shot up here with the standard. <clears throat> you can tell that the PMC round definitely recoiled a lot more, just like any standard 45 ammunition. But the uh, multi-impact rounds seem to be a little bit more lower recoil. Uh, so now that we've done this, Let's uh, get the 12 gauge out and see how we do. All right, guys, now we're going to shoot the 12 gauge semi lethal first and then fully lethal rounds out of the Mossberg 930 and see how we do. That looked awesome. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, we're down range after shooting the semi-lethal and fully lethal 12 gauge for multiple impact. The results were a lot better than what I initially expected because I'm shooting out of a Mossberg 930 that does not have a rifled barrel. And all the literature I've read says you got to shoot out of a rifled barrel so that it builds that spin and those forces come into play in separating the projectiles. However, out of a smooth bore, these spread really good and I shot from about 20 yards. So here's my first shot with the semi-lethal round. You can see the center core actually struck right here, a little bit off-center from the where I can see where the tethers went through the paper. 
So I've got a strike way up here, and that's, uh, let's see, six. It's about uh, seven and a half, eight inches spread. It's got an advertised spread of 14 inches. Um, and then down here, we've got a little bit less spread with uh, about five and a half and about five and three quarters, six inches tops. So the theory behind this ammunition is that uh, even if you miss, you know, if you had a glaring miss, you're still going to have a chance to strike the, uh, the target. So it gives you a higher probability of hitting. This is the fully lethal round. The recoils between the two were noticeable. The semi-lethal is pretty much almost looks like the same projectile. I took them apart and weighed them. Uh, it's just got a less of a powder charge. You know, it's low brass, whereas the full lethal has high brass. Uh, so you can see some of the string dangling got wrapped up in my target here. Uh, but my first or my second shot with the fully lethal round, actually, I had to rotate my target. It kind of split the paper in half at the top. But you can see here that I have an, my 45 core struck here. And then I had a, so this would have been like a glaring miss, you know, skipping off the skull. But I've also got a strike here, and the two other strings actually went over the top of the target. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is uh, use my two interns, Bobby Bluebeard and Mr. Pink, and we're going to demonstrate uh, at long range, so about 30 yards, 40 yards, uh, what kind of head strikes can we get shooting at a smaller target right here. Let's see how it works. Come on, boys. Your turn. Okay, now we're going to see how the higher hit probability of the multiple impact does with taking headshots at a longer range. Probably about 25, 30 yards from Bobby Bluebeard and Mr. Pink. Uh, Mr. Pink's going to be receiving the uh, 12 gauge rounds. Uh, so we got three less lethals followed by one full lethal. Let's see if we can get a head strike. Uh-oh, I think uh, Mr. Pink's taking a nap. Let's switch over to uh, Bobby Bluebeard. All right, let's go down range, see how we did. Okay, we're down ranged. After a thorough tongue lashing for, to uh, Mr. Pink for taking a nap on the job, uh, we see that we actually got a couple strikes on him. Obviously right here, dead center in this uh, very attractive logo on his, uh, I don't even know what you would call this, his hat. Uh, and then we also have a strike on the left temple. Pretty devastating. Uh, so much so that he instantly wanted to take a nap on the spot, so he fell over. So let's take a look at Bobby Bluebeard. Now, uh, luckily for Bobby, his, uh, his aviator sunglasses are still intact. A little bit knocked off, but they're perfectly usable. Uh, Bobby did get a laceration straight to the face. He's got a, uh, it looks like a clean miss. However, the, the rope, the string, is going all the way across the bridge of his nose along each ear. So uh, I think we're going to take another shot at uh, Bobby here with the 45, the uh, SR-1911 and see if we get any better results other than just a, a line across his face. Okay, time for the 45 ACP. Yeah, we're about uh, 15 yards away, 20 yards away. Let's see how it works. Man, I gotta find some less sleepy interns. Let's go wake Bobby up, see how he did. Hey, we're back down range. As you can see, I've woken up Bobby. I uh, can't find any interns that uh, can stay awake during this test. So uh, actually, Bobby's glasses stayed perfectly intact. As you can see, I'm wearing them right now. Uh, I think these are my new favorite pair since they have some kind of bullet dodging powers. I couldn't seem to uh, break them. Bobby did lose his bandana. 
and uh, he received multiple impacts to the neck as you can see here got him several times or three times right in the jugular another very interesting thing is that as that that Y that tether goes around the head comes around the back I actually have pieces of lead embedded in the back of his neck so definitely maybe some spinal injuries as well even though I might have missed a direct impact to his frontal face area the strings still wrap around and hit him in the back of the neck so kind of like a bolo uh, pretty cool actually uh, the neck just looks terrible he's gonna need to have some work done um, but that's okay we've got pretty good health insurance here at the firearms radio network so uh, Bobby looks like you're gonna make it home okay I have some recovered uh, tethers and slugs from the uh, the bank here uh, each of these weigh from these are from the shotgun they, each of these weigh about 200 grains uh, if you're a reloader uh, kind of there's a wide uh, spread in between weights some of them weigh 205 some 202 some 210 so I don't know how that affects the spread when there's an uneven uh, weight to all the segments uh, overall I think we've learned some important things today uh, I can't make a PBC target stand worth a darn. And two, these multiple impact bullets give you a higher probability of striking your target. So, pretty good test. I want to thank multiple impact bullets for sending me some to review. Uh, it was great meeting them over in SHOT Show this year. Uh, if you're interested in reading my written review for the multiple impact bullets, go on over to www.firearmsinsider.tv. That's my blog where I host the Gun and Gear Review podcast. If you go to reviews, you'll find the review that I written on the multiple impact bullets. So if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, Firearms Radio Network, also go to iTunes and look for Firearms Radio Network and all of our great podcasts that we host on the show. This is our 5 millionth download year, and if you're not already listening, you're missing out. So get on your smartphone and look us up. And you can catch me every week on the Gun and Gear Review podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Cross from Firearms Radio Network, signing out. This has been a production of the Firearms Radio Network. You can find more information at firearmsradio.tv.